been busy learning a whole lot of stuff since I bought the Speedy B flight flight controller the stack and got reacquainted with Beta Flight. So one of the things I didn't wasn't too interested in getting into in the first place was the OSD tab. In fact, I was running the camera straight to the flight to the VTX and then down to the uh, down to the ground. So the time has come when I'm going to get into the whole world. So this is the drone I'm going to do it with. So I'll make the changes and then I'll do a demonstration of flight and show what comes up. At the moment I've got uh, two wires from the pads t on top left. Um, power and earth going to um, power both the VTX and the camera off that one connection. So there's the pair power running to the VTX and from the VTX I've got uh, power running to the camera. And uh, when it comes to the video that yellow wire runs between the two. So I've got no connection from the video coming from the camera to the uh, flight control board. It just goes straight to the VTX and broadcast to the goggles of ground station. And that's worked fine up till now because uh, I wanted to keep it simple when I first got into this. But now I've got to the point where I want to route it through the uh, flight control board so I can add uh, OSD things to it. Uh, in particular, I'm after the uh, artificial horizon. So to do that, I'm going to add... I'm going to solder up an extra pad for the camera, come the feed from the camera to the board at the front. And on the back of the board, I'm going to have power and uh, video out from the VTX pad to the, uh, the VTX. So that's that's the plan. So I chose this drone because it's easy of getting the top off and on. And uh, that's the guinea pig. And as you notice, I like to have plugs so I can unplug cameras, VTXs and even the ERS module, so if I don't need power to them while I'm working with uh, beta flight, they're not getting overheated. So having figured out what I'm going to do, the next step is going to be to get out the soldering iron and start making changes. So here it is after I've made the changes, you can see straight away an extra um, yellow lead coming off the back of the board. <coughs> and that goes to the VTX, so that's the output from VTX to, uh, to broadcast it. And on the front of the board, the extra yellow line that's now running directly from the camera into the camera port of the uh, Speedy B F405. And the power the power now going straight to the camera and on the other side of the board where there's VTX out uh, the VTX has its own 5 volt feed on that side so that's the wiring done and the next step will be to fire up uh, the beta flight configurator and make the changes that I can save to the motherboard to allow me to use it So here I am on the PC, so I fire up uh, the beta flight configurator and then connect the, uh, the drone and uh, first thing I'll do is go to the receiver just to show that it's attached woggle the uh, joysticks and everything seems to be fine there so that's what I expect next step is to go down to the OSD tab and yeah, first thing is get rid of some of these ticks. I didn't understand what the three columns were for. I thought they might have been um, angle, horizon, macro mode. It turns out they're three different uh, profiles, and most people only use the one profile. So that's why I only have a tick in column one. Now I'm looking at the uh, the warnings um, because most of them don't apply. Um, so I'm just taking out the ones I don't want. Um, pretty obvious what I'm doing there. 
I don't have a GPS module, I'm just relying on the barometer that's built onto the uh, SpeedyB F405 board. And I don't want it to have a visual beep or whatever that is. On the other hand, good to know if the link quality is suffering or the battery is not right. So I leave those. And then it's down to the uh, post flight statistics um, because it came by default with a whole lot of irrelevant stuff. Now, the first thing I want to turn on is the altitude maximum since I can. And then I want some stuff about battery condition. Uh, I don't use the black box, so I want to get rid of those. So that's pretty good. Uh, RSI size, okay. Speed, again, I don't because I don't have a GPS, can't use that. Not quite sure what the timers are. Um, I think I'm getting confused with the timer on the uh, the pocket, the Radio Master pocket, but never mind. Timer one on. And then there's one last thing I think up at the top. Um, oh, down here, yeah, up the top is the altitude. You can set alarms. So 120 meters as high as you're supposed to go with a drone in Australia. So that's why I'm changing that to that. And then I spotted right down the bottom with the three columns, I have three ticks. So I'll go back and uh, get rid of uh, a couple of ticks there. Because I'm not using those other two profiles. And then uh, with that all done, and you can see where it's going to be displayed on the screen, the warnings and the altitude, I save those settings to the flight controller. And before I go, just have a quick look at the presets I start with. I find these three are great for my uh, fairly relaxed style of flying. And then I modify the Puccini a little bit to make it uh, less wild. And that's the way I like to, to do it at the moment. So out of that, disconnect from beta flight. And I'm now ready to test flights. So back on the reserve fairly close to home for this uh, first test flight with the... Um, the OSD turned on. So you can see straight away the altitude's a little bit flaky within a meter as you take off, but here I am doing a steady climb as I head out. And the artificial horizon right in the middle of the screen doing a, uh, a good job. It seems to, I've got the camera lined up fairly well and they, they seem to correlate. Um, more importantly, after the flight I had a look at the GoPro footage for comparison and it checked out pretty well. So. This looks like a successful mod and I'm finally realising that there are some values to having more stuff on screen. I still like having a couple of bars from the, uh, the rapid fire module so I can see what the video uh, signal strength is because that's the weakest point. So I've just cut to where I climbed to maximum altitude which is 114 metres. Interesting enough at this height um, you get the sweep of the land but you're losing detail. So for photographic work most of the time I think 60 to 80 meters above the earth is fine, which is well within the uh, CASA mandated 120 meters. Here I am landing, again you can see the flakiness of the altitude below a meter, and right at the end here's the stats, so it's given me the um, the total on time and also the maximum altitude reach, so uh, you've got that and then a whole bunch of stuff about battery, which um, you generally don't uh, particularly care about if nothing goes wrong, but it's all good to have, so uh, I'm sold.